Hello game devs, I'm James and this is episode number 6 where we're creating our mobile game Endless Cave. And before we get started, some quick announcements. Number 1, the game is done now for Android, you can download it directly from the Play Store. Please download it, please give it a try and please 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 give it a, a review on the Play Store, that would help so much. If you're an iPhone user and don't have an Android phone, you can still play the game on my website. The web version of the game works just as fine on mobile devices. And number two, I received some really cool questions from you guys on YouTube and on Discord. And I'm gonna start working on the first Q&A episode very soon. Today we're creating the floor, the scrolling floor in our Endless Runner. So we start out in the play scene. As always, the first thing we do is we access the configuration object. In the play scene, we also need to start thinking about the different depth levels of different elements. For the floor, it's very easy. It's simply going to be our background, which has a value of zero. Our play scene is also gonna need some flags. For example, if we currently allow user input, if the game is paused or not, or if the game is even already game over. I just want to make a quick note right here. You've probably noticed that I'm using underscores. I use underscores for my properties and variables and I use the common lowercase uppercase combination of words for my functions and methods. For example here the allow input property, I don't need to ask myself if this is a setter method allow input or I, if this is a, a flagging property. I can see immediately it uses an underscore so I know this is a property. I'm aware that this is not a common practice, but it just helps me to read my own code much quicker and saves me time. Alright, back to today's task. So basically we want to create a floor, draw it on the canvas, and then we want to scroll the floor as the camera moves deeper and deeper down the cave. And every time the camera moves deeper down, we want to draw new rows of floor tiles and we want to delete the floor tiles that have passed the camera on the top. So we already know now that we need to have some methods to move the camera in the play scene. The update camera method is going to scroll the camera down and down and the set cam speed method is just a setter method which we can use to always save the current camera speed. We're gonna come back to these two methods later, but now let's start generating the floor tiles. For this purpose, and for all, gener like all random generation in our game, we're going to create a new prefab called Generator. Actually, I'm sure there would have been a better name than Generator, but honestly I couldn't come up with anything better. If you have a better name for this prefab, let me know in the comments. The Generator prefab needs a reference to the scene, and we also save the configuration object and the drawing depths of the play scene. Everything that we're going to see on the camera, we're going to call it a room. So one tile is 32 by 32 pixels and our game screen is 360 by 640 pixels. That means we have 11 columns and 20 rows in one room. Next, we wanna have a setup method for our generator and it is inside this setup method where we create the floor tiles. Our generator also needs to be updated in every frame of the game. So this is where the generator will scroll the floor. Remember that our generator is going to generate all the rooms in our Endless Runner game. However, today we're just focusing on the floor. That's why we have these general setup and update methods which are going to call all the different create and update methods for the individual sections. Right now we're working on the floor, so let's continue with the floor section inside the generator. As we have already outlined in the play scene, we want to create the floor tiles, which means drawing the floor, then we want to scroll the floor, and scrolling the floor means we always append a new uh, row of tiles at the end of the room when the camera starts scrolling to the next row and we also want to destroy and delete 
every row that has already passed outside of the camera's view on the top. Before we continue coding these methods, let's integrate the generator prefab into our play scene. And as with every prefab, we also need to include it in our index.html file. Now we can return to our generator prefab file. Our floor is actually nothing else than a grid. A grid that is slightly larger than the room that we see on the camera. Why should it be larger than the camera view? It has to be larger because as the camera scrolls, we want to make sure there's already a new row of floor tiles visible as it scrolls over it. That means our grid of floor tiles is exactly one row taller than the camera view grid. As I've already said, we're going to represent the floor as a grid of floor tiles and in JavaScript we do this by using a two-dimensional array. Once we've settled on these concepts, drawing the floor is actually very easy. As you can see, I'm looping through two values called ty and tx. ty stands for tile y and tx stands for tile x. That's basically the index in the two-dimensional array for the floor grid. I'm using ty and tx because I don't want to confuse these values with the x and y pixel values. So if ty is 1, then the y value would be 32 because ty stands for one tile and y stands for the pixel value in the canvas coordinate system. And if one tile is 32 pixels, that means ty equals 1 is a y value of 32. And as we're looping through each floor tile on the grid, we also have to set the origin to 0 and we also have to set its depth value to the floor depth. Finally, we can just save this floor grid in the floor layer of the generator. As you can see, we're drawing the floor tiles from a new sprite sheet called Tileset. We still have to load this new sprite sheet into our game and we do this in our preload scene. We have already talked plentiful about the preload scene in the episode where we were building our loading screen. However, very important here is that last time I explained why we're moving our tile sizes from 16 pixels to 32 pixels. And actually last time I forgot to update our preload scene to reflect the new tile sizes. As you can see, there was still written a tile size of 16 pixels for all the sprite sheets and we need to update that. Consequently, if everything doubles, the margin and spacing values have also doubled. Also make sure that you've added your play scene to the phaser game configuration object inside app.js and that you've included the phaser scene inside index.html. And now, when you refresh the browser window, you will see our floor tiles perfectly lined up on the grid. But there is still a little problem with our current floor grid. And that is, we have 11 columns of 32 pixels. That makes 352 pixels of total width for our floor. However, the game screen is 360 pixels wide. That means our game screen is 8 pixels wider than our floor. So if we change the background color to white, you will see that right now we have a border of 8 pixels on the right side. To make sure that our room is truly centered on the game screen, we need to give every X coordinate an offset of 4 pixels. I'm adding this value to my game config object so that I have it available in every scene. And now we can add this offset value to every X coordinate of our floor tile. If you refresh your browser window now, you will see that our floor is perfectly centered on the game screen. Let's put the background color back to black to not draw attention to these borders. Now let's go into the play scene and start scrolling the camera down deeper into the cave and see what happens. We are only using one camera in our game which we can access in this cameras.main and every camera has the set scroll method which allows us to set the x and y position of the camera inside the game world. Our camera is only going to move vertically 
so the x position will never change and always stays zero. However, the y position is going to change every frame by the camera speed. That's why we have a setter method for the camera speed called set cam speed. For the camera speed, we want to have a base speed and we want to know the current speed of the camera. Also, we want to make sure that the camera speed is never less than zero because that means we would start moving upwards and that is forbidden in our endless runner game where we always go deeper and deeper into the cave so the camera can only move down. And to avoid some crazy runaway effect, we're going to have a maximum speed for the camera as well. For starters, we can set all these values just to one, refresh the browser window, and then you'll see what happens. The camera is moving downwards, however, our floor is not scrolling, it's just one grid moving upwards. We need to fix that in the generator prefab. So how do we scroll the floor? Well, we do it by deleting rows of floor tiles that have already passed out of the camera on the top, and we append a new row every time the camera would reach the black background. This way we have the minimal number of tiles that we draw on the canvas and we create the illusion of an ever scrolling floor. As soon as the very first row of the floor grid completely disappears from the game camera, it has an offset of exactly one tiles height, which means 32 pixels. We use this as a trigger to delete the row and append a new row to the floor grid. As you remember, our floor grid is a two-dimensional array. So all we need to do is we loop through the first row in the floor grid, destroy every tile, which is just a phaser 3 sprite. We destroy it and then we splice the first row from the floor grid. To append a row, we first need to calculate the y value of the new row. Then we add an empty array to the floor grid, which is also an array. And finally, we can create the tile sprites just as we did in the create floor method earlier. We have already integrated the generators update method into our play scene. So all that's left to do now is refresh the browser window and you will see how the floor is scrolling endlessly and the camera is moving lower and lower down into the cave. And that's everything for today, guys. In the next episode, we'll create an entity prefab which we can use to add our player. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope you're already following me on Twitter for more updates. If you have any questions or feedback, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below, or you can join our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and see you in the next episode.